Well, good evening, everyone. It is so good to see you. I'm glad to have you back again tonight. And uh, I want to, uh, as we do in the mornings, I want to remind us why we're here. We're not here just uh, time for fellowship. We're not here just uh, to hear a report. We are here to worship God the Father because of the work of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross and through the power of his Holy Spirit. And we make God's name great by bringing people into life-transforming relationships with God and one another through Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. And uh, as part of uh, our reason for being here, of course, is this missions conference. And this is the last session. We're so grateful to have uh, President Nelson Miles from Frontier School of the Bible here with us. And he'll be sharing a message in just a few minutes. Uh, and um, with that in mind, uh, I want to say uh, I'm very grateful to uh, Joyce and the missions team for the hard work that they put in in putting this together. I think it's, uh, it, as a matter of fact, I don't think it, it's true. This is the, uh, the best uh, missions conference I've ever been to. And I'm, uh, I'm very grateful to God. I'm, I'm grateful for the work that's been done. It's obvious how much work has been done. I don't know if you have any idea of the logistics uh, involved in putting something like this together, but it, they've done an outstanding job. So thank you, missions team, for what you've done. And thank you, uh, missionaries, for taking the time to come and join with us tonight and, and through this conference. It's been, a, it's been a privilege getting to meet you and to know you a little bit and also to uh, have you share with us what it is that God's doing in other parts of the world and to know that we're in this together. Uh, we're with you, we communicate with you, we want you to communicate with us, uh, and uh, we love you, we're very grateful. So let's begin our time with a word of prayer, and then, um, <clears throat> and then Angie will come up and we'll begin to have some music. Thank you, Father, for our time, you're so good to us, you're loving and kind and merciful. We know that you are loving and kind and merciful because we can call you our Father, because of Jesus Christ because you love us so much that you died on the cross for us. You were buried and rose again on the third day to prove that you have the power over life and death, the power to forgive sins, the power to, to give eternal life, and we're so grateful. Thank you that uh, you uh, have caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we thank you for our time together tonight, and we ask that you would speak to us through uh, Nelson and and that uh, you'd be uh, willing to receive our praise and our prayers as we sing your praises tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our worship team has shrunk tonight. But it has been so much fun to worship with you guys this weekend. We are going to sing um, all of the new songs that we've learned this weekend. So if you would care to join me and stand and sing these, we will, we will do that. Thank you. 
time sometimes when I don't know for us I think when we're overseas and we run into trials and we've had our share of them um, it's this perspective of what's happening in heaven what's going to happen in heaven and just the reminder that God is worthy of praise he is worthy of the praise of every people that he has created that um, gives us the the strength to keep going so these kinds of songs are very special to me. A thousand generations 
for singing with me tonight. You may be seated. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, it's so good to be back in Michigan. And uh, one of the things that I love is that uh, I'm able to be ha here back in the fall. Fall is my favorite season in, 
in Michigan. We have fall in Wyoming. All five trees uh, look really pretty. But uh, yeah, we have far more than that, but still, you know what I mean. If you've been out our way, we're out in the open plains of, uh, of Wyoming. Well, I want uh, to start by just uh, thank you, to thank you for your partnership with Frontier School of Bible. I don't know how many years it's been, but I'm guessing it has probably been at least 25 years that uh, you've partnered with, with the school. And uh, it has been such a blessing, all the different ways that, that you've participated in our ministry. And one of the things that I appreciate is that you have a praying church. Honestly, I think I'm here this year because of your prayers. Some of you know that I, I have some diagnosed illnesses, but I've got some undiagnosed ones. And there was a while there that I, I thought I would never make it back to Michigan. And, but I have people that have prayed for me. And the last two years have been really good years. And I started speaking at Bible camps again and different things. And, and uh, the Lord has, has answered your prayers. And I, I just want to say thank you so much for that. A little bit about our family. Cheryl was not able to come. We are taking care of her father. And uh, there's a number of other things as well. So she really wanted to be here. And so hello from, from Cheryl. <laughs> and so uh, she is also very busy at the school. She is involved with all the... Uh, women teaching women courses at the school. Uh, Cheryl and some other ladies over the years have developed an entire women's ministries program. And her favorite part is teaching ladies how to dig into the word, develop devotionals, um, messages, doing Bible studies. And we have got some excellent female teachers at the school because of our women's uh, ministry courses. And so she loves that. Cheryl and I also at our old age are youth leaders at LaGrange Bible Church. I still haven't been able to get youth ministry out of my blood. And we love working with those kids. They are a, a great group. Our oldest daughter is a pastor's wife in Camas, Utah, as far as I know, it's the only non-Mormon church in, in Camas. And God is doing some amazing things uh, with the LDS people. And uh, Kirk and Michelle are, are just thrilled with uh, what God is, is, is doing there. Our son Gary lives in southern Utah. He his job is helping new businesses get started. And he did training on this, and, and it's with a Christian emphasis. And so he's been doing that for a couple of years now. Our daughter, Lindsay, just moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. And she works with girls 14 through 18 who have been trafficked. And uh, they have a safe house there. We don't know where it is. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that unless you work there, you wouldn't know where that, that is. But that has been a burden on her heart ever since she got out of Bible school. She's wanted to do this. And she's absolutely loving it. These girls are trusting Christ as Savior. And they're getting them on a path to be able to make it on their own once they, they, they leave there. Uh, our daughter, Anne, is uh, working at Frontier, yeah, the only child we have close by. And we told her she can't leave. No, we want our kids to be wherever God wants them to be. But uh, she has been a great help at Frontier. However, I'm a little nervous. It's my own fault. 
you know how my father was a matchmaker. And I was speaking at a wild game feed in the UP of Michigan. And after that was over, we were at the pastor's house. He has a, a, a single son who graduated from Frontier. And I said, Sam, I have two daughters uh, that are unmarried. Wouldn't you like to be part of our family? And uh, he, I left, and his dad said, what are you waiting for? You get a hold of Anne, and they have been going back and forth ever since. So my dad was just an amateur with that. I, I'm the one that truly has that, that gift. I try to help students all the time. But anyway, update about the school. School, we're having a great year. Great group of freshmen. And the school is growing ever since the two things that happened. COVID, uh, the school really began to grow at that point. But also, we have been praying because of all the needs in missions, because of all the, the needs uh, with churches, we have been praying that God would give us at least 30 pastors and 30 missionaries out of every graduating class at Frontier. And again, since we started praying that, the school has been growing. And so right now we're trying to get the infrastructure there for that growth. We're running out of room in so many different areas. It's a good thing, but it's still a challenge for the school. We've been praying for harvesters to train. And we've also been praying for just... Uh, you know, not just harvesters overseas, but harvesters right here in the United States. Uh, students going back to their home church and being a harvester, wherever that is, and, and plugging into the local church. Uh, on the job, wherever it might be, we're, we're, we're asking God to give us harvesters. We're right in the midst of, of building some new faculty and staff housing. If you're going to have more students, you have to have more, more of that. We're working on a duplex. We just purchased, or I will close on another place when I get back uh, this, this next, well, this week. And again, the Lord just keeps providing. Everything was sold in LaGrange. Nobody was selling anything. We didn't have room for expansion. And I thought there's one man that I knew years ago, he bought some property, half block, right next to uh, the elementary school there in LaGrange. And I gave him a call and I said, I, hey, I was just calling to see, would you have any interest in selling that property? And he said, you know, I would. And he said, would you be interested in my other properties as well? Well, I didn't know that he had any other properties. And I said, we would. And so he sold all of that to the school at a very, very fair price. And as I'm talking with this man, at one time he was resistant toward Christians and, and didn't like the Bible school because of that. And as we finished our conversation, he, he said to me, Nelson, I'm happy to, to sell to the Bible school because I know what you folks do is good. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is a miracle. One, because there was no property available in LaGrange. And secondly, uh, somebody who used to be an adversary of the school now is excited about the school. And so God has, has done some, some really great things. We, we, we have a freshman class that is tender toward ministry. We just finished our, our missions conference. It was tremendous. Uh, Bruce Hughesby from Grand Rapids came and, and uh, did our, our missions conference, did a great job. We have a student-started uh, ministry at Frontier. It's called the MOOC, Advancing Missions on Our Knees. And we have up to 50 of our student body that come to that six o'clock in the morning to pray for missionaries. And 
God's doing things. You know, as we talk about those 30, the 30 and 30, that's how I remember it. Just remember to pray for the 30-30. And so we, we, we see that, and almost daily we get some, uh, some church somewhere that asks for a pastor, and it's getting worse. So there's not the younger generation taking the place of the older generation that's retiring. And so we're really praying about this. And, and please pray, pray with us in, in regard to that. Now, some of you don't know a lot about the school. Some of you do. And so I want to share a little bit about what the school is. We've been in existence for over 50 years. The school was started by two graduates of Grand Rapids School of the Bible and Music. And so that legacy continues on. They helped start Frontier School of the Bible. And it, it's, it used to be, and I'm really disappointed with this, Michigan used to be our number one state from where we got our students. It slipped to number two. Folks, we got to do something about that, okay? Uh, but there is still that connection with, with Grisboom that's going on. And the school was, was started just like Grisboom to be intensive training for life and for ministry. Life and ministry. Not just those that feel the calling to be a pastor or a missionary, for anybody. It, it, it's available for anyone. And our school model comes from Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, which says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. This is my 32nd year at Frontier. We've had a couple thousand students go through the school. And I just want to say, you have part in every one of their lives and ministries today. To me, that's an exciting thing to think about. This church here is partnering with ministries that are all over the world. And not just foreign places, but right here in the United States as well. I, I think it's a, it's, it's a great, great investment. Now, we're not, we're not a college. We're not a liberal art, arts college. We're, we're an institute where there's really one focus of study, and it's, where, it's the Word of God. Uh, saturating our students with the Word of God, which trains them for life, and it trains for ministry. And it's a fun thing to watch. Uh, it changes people's lives. We had a gal that came to Frontier, I would say very rebellious, and I didn't think she'd make it through the first week of school. When she graduated, she said, Mr. Miles, do you remember what I was like when I was a freshman? And I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> she is a missionary today. Changed lives. I, 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 I think of uh, an individual. I never had the opportunity to meet him. I just talked with him on the phone and uh, he came to Frontier for one year. He just he wanted one year of Bible before studying for the medical field. And he actually, he became a doctor here in, in Michigan. And I got a letter from him, and, and he said, I j just want you to know, I went to Frontier for one year, but he said, that one year prepared me for what I was going to face as a doctor. And... That's what the Word of, of God does. Uh, it, it changes people's lives. And, it, and we're going to talk in a, in a minute how uh, God also prepares lives. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Very familiar passage of Scripture uh, but if, if we had another verse that would be a great school motto, it would be these two verses right here. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given 
by inspiration of God. It is a miracle book that does amazing things in people's lives. And it's profitable for doctrine or teaching, for reproof when, when we're going a wrong way, for correction, how to get it right, for instruction in righteousness, right living. Then listen to this, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Equipping people. I got a phone call from an alumnus of the school, and he called me. He said, uh, God's called me to minister to some very difficult people. They're drug addicts. They're alcoholics. Uh, typically, their, their marriages are a wreck. And he said, you know, what I learned at Frontier, that's what I'm giving these folks. It, it's the word of God that changes people's lives. And, and I was trained to do that, and that's what I'm doing. And it's so exciting to see lives that are changing. There's another individual that uh, it all started with one of our graduates going to China as a missionary. He taught English as a second language, and he had Bible studies there in China. There was a Ukrainian student by the name of Yuri who uh, was going to school at this Chinese university, started to, to attend these Bible studies, and he trusted Christ as Savior. He ended up coming to Frontier he graduated from Frontier. He went back to China as a missionary, and he was teaching English as a second language, doing Bible studies. I got an email from me. He says, Mr. Miles, I cannot believe it. I am here in China teaching off of my Frontier School of the Bible degree, and they're paying me to do this, this university. He led a young gal to the Lord. Her name is Amy. She came to Frontier last year. And it's just kind of a, a chain that has been going. That couple is, is looking at, uh, he's looking to pastor a Chinese church up in, in Canada. And... Uh, Great couple, great couple. And I could, I could go on and on. I don't have time, but I just want to say Frontier has just always been rock solid on the supremacy of the scriptures. I do believe we're in the last days. And all of us have seen churches. We've seen organizations. We have uh, seen schools that are making changes and moving away from the word of God. I praise God that, that God has given us a board of directors that is outstanding. They, they keep the school focused on the reason it, it came into existence. And that has been such a blessing over the years. And, and, and God has, has kept the school from a lot of different things. I was asked uh, on Saturday about when the Department of Education in Wyoming came one day away from shutting us down. They wanted to dictate what we would teach at Frontier and who would teach it. And we said that's unconstitutional. And the school took a stand. And then the Alliance Defense Fund heard what was happening and they intervened. And uh, a new statute was uh, put into place in Wyoming to protect schools like Jackson Hole Bible College and, and, and Frontier School of the Bible. And, and God saw us through that. And there's people here who prayed, and we saw God work. In fact, after we got out of one of the Senate meetings, one of the lobbyists told me, Nelson, you just saw a miracle take place in there. This is not how it normally goes. And I said, there's people praying all over the country, all over this world for this situation right here. You folks prayed and, 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 and God answered. 
number of years ago, we had some other individuals that, that sought to undermine the school's doctrinal position. And uh, they were making accusations against the school and different things. And we asked people to pray. God answered. And one of the things I, I just wanted to do tonight is just thank you and give glory to God for how he answers prayer. And just, uh, I, I'm, I'm so glad to have churches like this that pray. Pray that the Lord will keep the school on track until he returns, which I hope is very soon. The second thing about Frontier that I think is, is such a blessing and it glorifies God is over 50 years of trusting in our all-powerful God. I was reading an article about the beginning of the school and, and one of the founders uh, mentions Psalm chapter 20 and verse 7 that says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And that's how Frontier was established. As far as I know in the school's history, it has never looked to anyone or anything other than God to meet its needs. And that was in place from the very beginning. I got to be part, I get to be part of that, and we've seen God do so many different things uh, the school does not take any government funds. We, we don't want the government having any say in what we do at Frontier. But the other thing is we want to look to God to, to meet our needs. And he has done that all along the way. The school has no development department. The school will never ask anyone for money. It's our policy to not do that. And it allows us to see God do things. There's no borrowing, no going into debt to build any buildings. So what do we do when we have a building project? We ask people to pray, we pray, and then we just watch God work. We, we once had a business manager that said, Nelson, if we run short on funds, what are we going to do? I said, well, we will uh, really cut back on our spending and, and we'll pray. And he said, well, what's the plan B? And I said, that's plan A, B, C, D, and all of the above. And he would just shake his head. And after a period of time where he saw again and again how God provided, he said, Nelson, this school reminds me of a bumblebee. It shouldn't fly, but it does. God has never let the school down. The school has always ended the year in the black. With all of our building projects, some of you have been there to see them. Those that haven't, I, I invite you to come. You've got an invite. We have a beautiful guest house. You're welcome to come and stay there and see what God is doing there. But over and over again, we've seen God's hand. There is a piece of property that we wanted to build some married housing, and there was a house that was with that property, and we're always looking for property. But anyway... Uh, the owner of that came over one day. I'd never met him before. He said, you know, they're building the, the new bar right behind my house. And he said, I, it, I'm upset about it, and I'm going to move. And I don't want to sell to anybody but Frontier. He said, are you interested? And I said, yes, we are definitely interested, but we don't have any money. He said, that's okay. Don't need to move yet. Uh, I'll get back to you. He eventually got back to me. Are you still interested? Yes. 
but we still have the same amount of money as the last time you asked me. So I say, could you give us the weekend? And he said, yes. And so that night, our faculty and staff prayed that if God wanted us to have that, that he would just give it to us. The next day, got a phone call from a man. He said, hey, hey you know that property that's going to go up for sale? Kitty corner from the dining hall? Yes. He said, there's a young man in our church that was killed in a car accident, and I want to buy that for the school in memory of that young man. Now it's staff housing, married student housing. Our student center. We built our student center and dormitory in one summer, which was quite a job, quite a financial expense. We had 70 workers coming to help us with that project and no money for materials. And we were one week out. We prayed. I was sitting in my office. Mike Hughesby, our, our dean of students, was sitting there. I opened a letter and I said, Mike, somebody just gave $10,000 to buy materials for the project. We were rejoicing, and then I said, Mike, wait a second. There's too many zeros. It's $100,000. It came one week before we had all the materials available. It looked like a beehive with workers coming in and out of, of those buildings. The new chapel seats about 400 people. I'm thinking... This is going to be interesting to see how God does this. The interesting thing with that project was that all the money was in hand before we broke ground. We've seen it over and over again. Our, I, I love to give tours because it gives glory to God. Every building has a story. Our dining hall, the school saved for 12 years for a bigger dining hall. We had $12,000. Our board voted to go ahead and, and pour the slab and then see what God does. We were out there pouring the slab. Business manager came out right in the midst of all that. And she said, I just thought you'd want to know $50,000 was just given to the school for this project. I, I kind of felt a little bit like maybe the, the priest that stepped into the Jordan. And it, it didn't part until they put their foot in. And that's how God did it with that. You know, you're just wondering, how is God going to do this? Our student center, not our student center, our, our, our bookstore was the town bar. We'd have visitors that would walk around that bar and pray that it would come to the school. It was the only piece of property on that block that didn't belong to the school. One day I got a phone call from a real estate agent down in Cheyenne. They said, somebody wants to anonymously purchase that property for the school. To this day, I have no idea who provided those funds. God's provision again and again. I want to tell one more story. When COVID hit and everything started to go up in price, and we're all experiencing that right now, fuel is going up, uh, our food costs are going up in the dining hall, everything is, is going up by quite a percentage. As that was happening, our, our board voted to not raise the cost of schooling. We, we want everyone to be able to graduate debt-free. And so they voted not to raise the prices and asked that God would increase the giving to the school to make up the difference. And I just want to say, he not only has made up the difference, but he has answered abundantly. Abundantly. And we need to build a new dormitory. 
The Lord has been providing already for that. We need bigger classrooms. The Lord is beginning to provide for that. And in my time at Frontier, I've seen over and over again how God loves to be trusted. He loves to be trusted. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have this in our uh, hallway of our administration building, quote from Hudson Taylor, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. And we've seen God do that again and again. I want to encourage you to keep praying. Here's a few other prayer requests I want to leave with you. Again, we, we are always interested when a piece of property comes available. Well, there's a half block of property that we are on three sides of that building. And we've been praying about this piece of property for probably 15 years. The person that owned it has passed away. It's in the hands of the kids. And uh, so we have been, we, we are praying about that piece of property. That is where we would like to put a new classroom facility and uh, a new dormitory. It connects to the hub of our campus. And, and so that's a prayer request that I would like to leave with you. Another prayer request is God has blessed us with filling staff positions. It has been wonderful. We have, uh, God has pr provided out of the state of Michigan. We needed more people for our maintenance staff. We got one from uh, Byron Center Bible Church. We got a maintenance man out of Clarksville Bible Church. And we got another maintenance man out of Calvary Bible Church in Kalamazoo. Michigan is taking over our maintenance department, which is just fine with me. But with, with the campus that we, we have and with what's going on, God is, again, giving us the staff that we need for that. Another prayer request in regard to the growth, we could really use two more instructors. And again, we, we, my brother Tim came this semester to teach. By the way, the latest update on him, I, I shared with some of you, they thought he had a stroke. They ruled that out. They saw that it had put a lot of stress on his heart. And they flew him down to Fort Collins, where there were some great doctors. The doctors were baffled because he had stroke symptoms, but he hadn't had a stroke. So they went through neurology, and they found out that my brother has an autoimmune disease. And it affects the nerves in his body and the sheath that covers the nerves. And it is treatable. And so he, he has begun treatment for that. When he went into Fort Collins, his heart was functioning at 20%. The last I heard was 44%. So the heart is, is coming along, and he is now starting physical therapy. So that's all I know at this point, but thank you again for praying. Talking to my sister-in-law, so many different answers to prayer in regard to that. In fact, he had a seizure one night, and the next morning, he could talk again. His slurred speech had gone away. He seemed like his old self. He was laughing. And I asked the, the nurse, I said, 
how do the doctors, how do you folks account for that change? They said, we have no idea. And I said, I do. I do. Because we've got people praying. You folks prayed for that. And, and I appreciate that very, very much. Keep, keep praying. Here's another thing to pray about. Pray for more harvesters to train. Pray for our 30-30. I do believe, as I said before, we're in the last days, but part of the last days is an apostasy. And the cure for apostasy is the word of God. And grounding people in the word of God. We have some students, they come for one year, they get that that foundation and then they go off to a, a, a secular job or whatever it might be but they want that one year foundation but then the three years is designed to train for missions pastoral ministry youth ministry children's ministries uh, women's ministries and so we need people to train so would you pray about that with me I have some little brochures uh, that are in your fellowship hall. Maybe you know a young person that you think, you know, I think maybe they might have an interest in this. And just in a nutshell tells uh, uh, what the school is, is, is all about. Uh, for young people, they really like stickers. They put them everywhere today. Water bottles, all kinds of things. I put stickers in there as well. You could give some stickers to a young person. But encouraging young people to consider getting Bible training. And uh, not only will they be immersed in the Word of God, but they will be exposed to missions organizations from all over the world, different ministries that, that they can be involved with. And many times, God uses that to call them into full-time Christian service. I've got five minutes for questions. Five minutes. Anybody have a question? Our freshman class this year was about 80 students. And uh, so we do have those that come for one year, but 75% of our freshmen come back for the second year. So. We do. Uh, before we do that, one of the things we tell people is our, 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 our price is our scholarship. Right now, for a year of training, tuition, room and board, books, and fees is $6,200 a year. And so all of our students graduate debt-free. So that is, is one thing. We have on-campus jobs as well. And we have many students that work outside of the school as well. But, uh, and then last year, a third of our student body received a scholarship. We have so many people that have uh, set up scholarship funds at the school uh, that that has gone up every year, the percentage, which is exciting. And... I have people that say, they'll just send money and say, give this to a needy student. And we get that all the time as well. Anyone else? All right, well, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for what a great God you are. And Lord God, it's not us, it's you. It's you that deserves all the honor and glory 
And uh, Lord God, I pray that our dependence would always be upon you, that we would trust you with uh, all the different things in our lives, dear Father. You love to be trusted. I thank you for this church. I pray, Father, that you would give them the pastor of your choosing. And in the time that uh, you have, dear Father, uh, we, we just uh, thank you for the legacy of this church. You see so many that, that have been sent out into ministry, so many that have been trained here at the church and, and serve uh, in this community and beyond. And Lord God, I, I pray for your blessing on Calvary Church of Wayland. And I thank you for the blessing that they have been to me and to Frontier School of Bible. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to close our time with one last song. And it feels appropriate that we sing this song after hearing of the tremendous dependence that Frontier has had on the Lord. Um, nothing we can do in this life, we can do on our own. We need to be completely dependent on Christ and, and plugged into our source. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and stand for this last song. Deep.
have a uh, time of fellowship right now down in the gym. There are parfaits, I think they're already made, or maybe you can make your own. I don't remember quite how that's going to go, but one or the other. Uh, you'll figure it out when you get down there, but uh, plan on sticking around and enjoying some time of fellowship. And then let me leave you with these uh, words uh, that I shared with you this morning from Matthew chapter 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. The end of the age isn't here yet. Let's keep at it. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for your missionaries. Thank you that you called us to mission. Thank you in Jesus' name, amen. And we're dismissed.